Okay, I wanted to get one more of these 2023 10A problems done. And I was doing this problem number 25 today earlier, attempting it with a student. And in my solve process, I was looking at some things and they made a suggestion about what might work. And I played around with that idea and managed to find a solution to it. I did not solve this during my test solve of the exam, but I thought this was really kind of neat. And it's also kind of fun because you can, uh, there's an Easter egg in here, if you will. We'll see what I'm talking about. If A and B are vertices of a polyhedron, which is a three-dimensional solid with faces like triangles or hexagons or octagons. In fact, you go back to problem 18, we had one there, a rhombic uh, dodecahedron. And so uh, first off, in these polyhedrons, there's Euler's polyhedron formula, which we mentioned in that solve video, F plus V equals E plus two. So maybe that'll play a role here as well. If A and B are vertices of a polyhedron, define the distance AB to be the minimum number of edges of the polyhedron one must traverse in order to connect A and B. So if AB is an edge of the polyhedron, then the distance AB is equal to one. So you can just draw a segment AB. These are directly connected by an edge, then that's why I just travel one edge. So that distance is one. However, if I have, let's say two equilateral triangles, and this is AC and uh, CB, but AB are now not connected. The only way to get to B is to go one, two, or one, two this way. You can go two different ways, but there still would be a distance of two no matter which path you took, okay? Uh, and they tell us that here, the distance AB is two. With that in mind, uh, let Q, R, and S be randomly chosen distinct points, uh, distinct vertices uh, of a regular icosahedron. Now, what is that? Well, a regular polyhedron made up of 20 equilateral triangles. We probably should draw one. Are you ready? Oh, you didn't take that art class. Uh, me neither, but uh, you could you could try to draw one if you wanted, or we could understand the Easter egg. The Easter egg would be that the Math Association of America has a particular symbol, and that symbol is right down here at the bottom of the screen. And on your task, it would have appeared somewhere, most likely on the front page, right there. If you're allowed to access a paper copy, uh, then that's where it would be. Or perhaps it was located like the one on AOPS at the bottom of one of the pages or something like that. But either way, that shape is actually an icosahedron. And so if we go back up now, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, we want to know the probability the probability that the distance from Q to R from these randomly chosen three points is greater than the distance from R to S. So one question I'll ask, do you think that after I select the point R, they're randomly chosen, and R can be chosen arbitrarily, that the points that are one unit away or that are, if I choose Q now separately, is Q have any advantage over S of being farther away than the other? Not really, right? There's no reason why one, because Q comes first in the alphabet, that you would have an advantage or something, right? There's not like they have favoritism towards the letters. So these distances, there's no reason why one has a better opportunity than the other to be larger. And therefore, the student that I had today, and they know who they are, hat tip to them for the suggestion of the thought, what if these are just equal? And they probably should be, right? then all we would have to do is take one minus the probability that they tie. And since these two probabilities are equal, and there's only three things, there's only the probability that the first one is greater, the second one is greater, or that they tie. All of those added up have to equal one. There's only three things you can have, tie, greater, or lesser. So I move the tie to the right side, and now we're arguing that these two things are equal, and so all we're going to do is divide by two. Now, this gives us a plan. The plan is how am I, I have to find this probability that they tie, subtract it from one and divide the result by two, and we should have our answer. So let's think a little bit more here too then about this formula from Euler, the F plus V equals E plus two. There are 20 
equilateral triangle faces. Let's find all these things. How many edges will there be? Again, if we go back to uh, the 1988 Amy 1, problem 10, that is where uh, intro to counting and probability from AOPS got its uh, great rhombocuba octahedron problem. It came from there. And so uh, if you go back, you want to find that problem and try it out. There's things that you learn in the solve process, and we can actually see those things down below. I'm going to clear screen and go below back to this icosahedron down here. And the thing is, is that this edge right here, and every edge, in fact, is really on two faces. And since it's on two faces, then we, if we took all the 20 faces and multiplied by three, because every face is a triangle and every face has three edges, but all of those edges were counted twice and you will divide by two. And this is one of the things you also do in the intro to counting and probability. They explain this to you in the problem in their book. And so because you'll divide by two, I think we also used it on the uh, rhombic dodecahedron in problem 18. So that means there's going to be 30 edges in our polyhedron. So back to our formula, faces 20 plus vertices equals edges plus two, edges is 30, then what must the vertices be? 12. What's another way that we could get this value? You could take any vertex and you could say of the 20 faces, there's three vertices, just like there's three edges, there's three vertices on every face, but every single vertex is attached to one, two, three, four, five triangles. Then I've counted it five times and I need to divide by five. And sure enough, that will give you 12 and there's the 12. Okay, so of these 12 vertices, let's say that I pick one of them to be Q, say this one. How many other vertices are there? There's 11 other vertices. If I wanted to find how many of those 11 vertices are one unit away, a distance of Q R equal to one, once I've chosen Q, how many points could I choose that would fit this criteria? We'll call it case one, if you will. Well, there'd be five. There's one here, 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 and here. So you get, you get five cases. Okay, then what? Well, now what if I wanted to find one that was two units away? Okay, so now distance from, uh, let's say, Q to R equal to two. Then let's say I started here, right? And I went over to this point. I go here, and then I go here. Okay, you'll see it kind of show up on the screen there. That would be a distance of two. In fact, after I've picked that first edge, I'll call it an intermediate edge, intermediate vertex, if you will. That would be this one right here. After I've arrived there, how many places could I go that are another unit away? I can't go here. Why can't I go here? Because that's actually only one edge away. And I can't go here because that's one edge away. So really from this point right here that we went to first, I had one, two edges I could go to. I can't go back to where I started if I called that edge right there or that vertex right there Q, I can't go back there. So there's only two new places I could go to get this distance of two. So we could say it's fundamental counting principle, kind of. And we'll see what we mean by that. First, you have five choices for your first intermediate vertex. Then you're gonna have two choices for the one that's two away. Are there really 10 vertices away from Q that are two away? We've, only, we've already got five that are one away. If I add 10 more vertices, that'd be 15. And we know there's only 12 total vertices altogether. This is impossible. Well, we're probably over counting. Let's go take a look. If I go to this one I went to here, that is two units away by going from the Q to here to here. Notice that if I had gone down and then to the right, I would get to the exact same vertex. And the one over here marked one, even though I could take one step from my intermediate vertex, I could also have gone this way and there. So this one was counted twice. If I chose this first path, 
and this as my second path, or this as my first path, and this as my second path, both arrive at the same thing. So all of these points that we just found that would be a distance of two away, we've actually counted them twice, and we'll have to divide by two. Okay, this is similar to how you count diagonals in a polygon on a two-dimensional space. What that means is that there are five cases of a distance that is two away, five cases. Well, what did we say at the beginning? If there's 12 total vertices, then there's 11 other vertices. And it must be that there is one where it could be three away. And there has to be one case of that. In fact, you can start right here and find it. Here's the first edge, here's the second edge, Here's the third edge, and that would be the point, directly opposite of the point that you started at. And there's only going to be one because there's 11 other vertices, and we've already used 10. Okay, so once we determine this, now we just need to figure out what's the chance, given that this is our situation, what is the chance that we have a tie? Well, uh, first, what is the chance that the distance from Q to R is 1? 5 out of? 11. There was five points I could connect to that were one unit away from Q. So if I say, given that I've chosen a vertex that is one distance away, one edge away from my starting point, then what is the chance that my second one from R now, okay, let's go back to our picture to kind of illustrate this. You are back at a value of Q right here, and you go here to R. What is the chance now from R that I pick a point S from the remaining points? How many are left? You've already used Q and R. There's now 10 remaining. Of those 10, how many are one edge away? The answer is four. So this will become four. Okay, great. Now, if I wanted to do add, I wanted to add the, the time where I get one that's two units away. What we're finding right now is the probability that they tie. The distances are equal, okay? So uh, Q to R, R to S, that's an equal distance. We're finding the chance of that happening. Now, if instead our D of Q and R, the distance to Q and R was five cases that are two units away, then I would have a five out of 11 chance of choosing those. And similarly, once I was there, uh, where could I connect to from that point? Every point has this same symmetry. Not only does Q have five cases that are two away from it, but so will R when we arrive at it. R will have five nodes that are two away from it, but one of those nodes is being occupied by Q. Therefore, there are only four other vertices or nodes that it could connect to. So there will be a four out of how many remain? If you've already chosen Q and you've already chosen R, there's only 10 vertices left. Now, if one of them got the case that it was three units away, there would be no way for them to tie. So we don't need to consider that case. All we have to do is add these up. 20 over 110 plus 20 over 110 is 40 over 110. Cancel the zeros. The chance of a tie is 4 out of 11. Now, what did we say to do to get the answer? We were going to do 1 minus the probability of a tie, which is 7 out of 11, and then you would take that result and divide it by 2. So times 1 half. 7 over 22. Why are we dividing by 2? Because the chance that QR is greater is equal to the chance that it's lesser, and we just want one of those chances. So now if we go back, 7 out of 22, I will clear screen and go up to the answers here. And sure enough, answer choice A, 7 out of 22. Hope you enjoyed the solve process. Don't forget about the resources around you. Uh, oftentimes your paper can be used if it says that the the vertex is reflected, pick up your piece of paper and actually fold the physical piece of paper so that the vertex lands on the other one. Maybe it'll help you in your visualization of what takes place. I do that kind of stuff all the time. 
That is all for this video. I will catch you in the next one.